That's right. That's our early morning fitness, uh, making sure that you stay fit and healthy and forever young. This is Morning Live and we're getting you started today. We are um, basically looking at uh, the benefits uh, Zambia may accrue from a free trade area. Um, is Zambia benefiting much in terms of being part of Comesa, being part of SADC, and going forward, as we hear that the president will be traveling to Ethiopia to be part of, to sign uh, this particular agreement. And so we're forecasting what benefits will, will our manufacturers, our SMEs get from this. And uh, on the program right now, we are joined uh, by a representative uh, from Comesa, and this is Mr. Benedict Musengele, who is uh, coming from Comesa. He's going to be able to help us understand how Comesa works and how member countries come together, opening up markets and being able to trade with each other, but also looking forward in how the uh, F uh, Africa Free Trade uh, Agreement will be able to also be part of this. Jason? Thank you so much. Good morning to you, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Musengele, and uh, thank you so much for your time this morning. Mm. Let's talk about, uh, you know, uh, Comesa first of all. How, how much of an impact has Comesa been in, you know, in most of these African countries where it's operated? Uh, thank you, Jason. Uh, Comesa is an intergovernmental organization uh, comprising of 21 member states, mm. stretching mm -hmm. all the way from uh, Libya uh, down to Eswatini. Uh, Comesa has uh, a population of uh, around 592 million and uh, a combined GDP of uh, 718 uh, million US dollars. Uh, for sure, this is a big market. Uh, Comesa uh, formed a free trade area in the year 2000. By then, uh, the trade among uh, the founder members of Comesa was uh, 1.5 uh, uh, billion. Uh, this intra-commercial trade has grown. Uh, to date, we are talking of uh, 7.9 uh, billion US dollars. Uh, Comesa has been able to establish various institutions which are helping uh, its member states to easily trade. Uh, I will mention uh, our clearinghouse. As you know, one challenge which uh, traders face when they are trading across the border is payments uh, because uh, the payment has to be routed through New York and other developed economies. But with our reps, uh, uh, you are able to uh, clear your payments within our country. We have the clearing house in Mauritius, whereby uh, an importer in uh, Mauritius who is importing from Zambia will pay using the Mauritian rupee, and the Zambian exporter will receive uh, his money in the uh, uh, Zambian quarter. And therefore, this <coughs> becomes uh, a, a critical uh, mileage when it comes uh, to trade. Uh, you know that uh, Comesa has been uh, having an online NTB uh, reporting, uh, monitoring, and a resolution mechanism. This enables the traders to timely uh, report any challenges they encounter in trade, and it is uh, able to be resolved within a record time. The Comesa NTB regulations provides for this to be uh, resolved within 135 days. Mm. And we are happy to report that uh, uh, since uh, the, 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 the mechanism was set in 2008, a total of 205 NTBs have been reported. And out of this, uh, 200 have already been resolved. Mm. And this is... Uh, uh, it, it, give, it gives me an indication that as a block, you've achieved quite a lot. But have individual countries really benefited? Uh, very true. Uh, individual countries have uh, benefited. Uh, if you look at uh, Zambia, where we sit, uh, the intra uh, commercial trade mm. compared to the uh, global trade by Zambia constitutes 18.3%, which is a substantial uh, percentage going to uh, one trade, uh, when, uh, going to one block. When you look uh, at uh, 2016, and 2017, uh, the intra commerce uh, exports for Zambia grew by 5.43%. And this shows you uh, a significant trade is taking place among member states. Mm. You look at a country like Kenya, uh, Comesa has been the leading export destination. Uh, the same applies to Uganda, among other uh, member states. 
of Comesa. This market has also been a substantial mm. market for mm. Egypt. And therefore, we are seeing majority of the member states increasing their intra commerce trade. So, so then I'm, I'm, I'm left to, to wonder, you know, you've got Comesa, you've got Sadiq, and Zambia is a member of Sadiq. How does this work? I mean, are you not just duplicating? Uh, not really, uh, because uh, the whole idea behind regional integration is to create a market where we will have seamless flow of goods and services. Uh, Comesa itself uh, has got four members who are ESC uh, member states, and it has got eight members who are SANDAC members. But when we talk of uh, free trade area, we are looking at a market whereby uh, a country imports uh, duty-free, quarter-free. You are aware that 13 of the SANDAC member states are members of the SANDAC free trade area. And then uh, we have Comesa out of the 21, 15 are members of the free trade area. Of course, you know mm. ESC is and, and first. And therefore, what Comesa has done is to enlarge the free trade market. And therefore, it gives uh, the participating member states mm. a larger market for their products mm. and you know the larger the market it is mm. uh, the high appetite you have for production because you have a ready market and this also calls for a diversification of your products so as to meet the needs of the wider market as opposed to when you are just a few members forming an FTA. So where has this left local SMEs you know for instance I mean we, uh, we understand that you know Free, trading blocks come with a lot of challenges. For instance, uh, it, it increases uh, competitive pressure. It, it's said to be choking local SMEs because of these, you know, free courses that you you put around. How how do you how do you strike to ensure that you still leave local SMEs, you know, uh, vibrant or surviving? Jason, uh, Commerce has not left uh, the SMEs aside. Uh, you may have heard about the simplified trade regime whereby this is a regime where two neighboring countries facilitated by Comesa comes together and agree a common list of products which their SMEs frequently trade. Recently, we, we, we had that list uh, between uh, Zambia and DR Congo, uh, especially the, the small-scale traders who mm. use the Kasumbalesa border. What it means, uh, uh, if you are exporting uh, goods to DRC, which do, does not exceed uh, 1,000 US dollars, you don't need to pass through the tedious uh, customs procedures. We have a commercial desk officer there who will assist the MSC to quickly uh, cross over, uh, sell uh, his or products, and come back. Uh, we have also uh, relaxed uh, visas uh, among uh, Commercial member states, which means that for a small scale trader to trade across the border, does he need necessarily uh, uh, to have a visa? Mm. Uh, we, you know that uh, we are also we have also negotiated the schedules of specific commitments for services, and majority of the commercial member states allows uh, business persons and intra corporate transferees to to be able to move to a commercial member states mm. and do trade. Uh, for a, a, a maximum of 90 days mm. and we we hope this will be expanded so that we can have free movement of business persons and therefore with the commercial market the ms smes need not to look only the zambian market but outside and with this they they have a chance of growing from uh, msc's to launch uh, uh, enterprises, mm. and uh, and this is good for the economy. So the African Continent of Free Trade Area um, was signed on the 21st of March 2018 in Kigali, Rwanda. With this coming into, you know, giving birth to this, where does it leave Comesa? Uh, Jason, so this uh, takes us back to to 1980 when we had the Langos uh, Plan of Action, and uh, we come back to the Abuja Treaty in 1991 mm. which saw the wrecks as the building blocks uh for the continental free trade area uh, because trade takes place at the member states and the wrecks themselves are closer to the member states and therefore a lot of implementation of the continental free trade area will be taking place at the wrecks uh when you look at um, the, the way the au was set and you 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 look at the constitutive act 
of uh, AU. It clearly stipulates the role of the RECs in the continental free trade area. And therefore, uh, when we look at the CFTA and we look at the RECs, it's looking at the CFTA as the, as the whole body and the, the RECs as the particular parts of the body because each wreck has got a specific area of focus where it concentrates and therefore the eight recognized wrecks by the AUC will be complementing each other and this will make it easier to implement the continental free trade area. Uh, Jason, you may also uh, note that when the AFCFTA was being negotiated, it mostly used uh, the instruments for the tripartite and the tripartite used the instruments of the RECs. So what we are seeing is the consolidation of the achievement of the uh, RECs at the continental free trade area. And of course, the widening of the market, which will be uh, good uh, for all the RECs. Bearing in mind that most of the member states trade more with their neighbors. And we don't expect that to be uh, a significant change when the FTA comes to place. But we expect some countries to start using other countries as manufacturing hub or trading hub to reach the larger market at the FCFTA level. So you think that uh, countries with larger populations or countries with smaller populations will not have an issue with this? Uh, we don't see them to have an issue uh, because uh, as opposed to the current situation whereby uh, we are seeing low levels of production and only concentrating for the domestic market, we are seeing them now becoming uh, uh, manufacturing hubs uh, to supply their neighbors and therefore they will have a chance to expand their production because the market is larger and now with the, the free trade area at the continental level they can be used by other large markets to produce to reach uh, their neighbors and we I have feel for small for countries that have not well established local manufacturing industries because then it will be like these smaller countries just be a dumping site for instance uh, there'll be a lot of product that Zambia can't manufacture that will just be dumped into the country and probably there won't be high grade quality products or be third or fourth or even I don't know. Okay uh, Jason talking about uh, dumping uh, first let's look at uh, with this uh, continental free trade area being in place we are going to see an expansion of cross-border infrastructure investments. With this kind of uh, expansion we are going to see uh, a growth mm. in industrial activities. And when we see this growth in industrial activities, they will not only be focusing on specific countries, but across the continent. Uh, at the same time, when uh, this uh, takes place, we are not saying that we are going to kill the national legislation. The national legislation is going to remain in place. You know the issue of SPS, you know the issue of standards. All these have to be adhered to. And therefore, a country, a small country, will still have the mandate to regulate. But you know what that comes into many its, of uh, these country. But you know that many of these African countries don't have laws, for instance, to protect or, or, or protect their patents. Uh, they, 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 their laws are not that very strong. And I'm seeing a, a situation where most of these uh, companies who have their, for instance, maybe their, uh, you know, patents or corporate to certain products being stolen by other countries. A very good observation, Jason. But phase two of the CFTA negotiation will be looking at the issue of intellectual property rights. And this will be the issue of patents will be addressed. Uh, you know that we have a repo which deals with the issue of uh, property rights. So mm. we expect during phase two negotiations, member states will, will tighten the issue of intellectual property rights, the issue of the, the competition uh, uh, law, to ensure that their markets are not eroded by opening up during the uh, implementation of the F FCFTA. So while all these things are taking place, you are also paying attention to environmental issues? Definitely. Currently, you cannot do away uh, with the environment because we need to protect our future uh, generation. And therefore, you, 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 you've seen that even at commercial level, we are 
advocating for green uh, uh, production we are also trying to uh, ensure that the products we are we are going to trade are friendly uh, a pocket you have already seen in various member states burning of plastics has uh, taken place and this is these are good practices which are going to uh, protect our environment as we see in increased industrial activities and trade so uh, as far as you're concerned this this is the way to go and obviously while we were trying to put all this together, you know, we noticed that there was a possibility of forming so many different bodies. You know, for instance, the African Monitoring Union, you know, the African Customs Union. And from a layman's understanding, this makes me think one currency. That's the direction we're going to. Uh, when you look at, again, uh, the Lagos Plan of Action, uh, the aspirations were to start with the, the continental free trade area and then move to the customs union. Uh, the other elements of uh, uh, monetary union, political federation, are not the focus currently. Our main focus is the AFCFTA and the customs union. And a study done by the EC here uh, showed that uh, if we were to implement the CFTA coupled with enhanced trade facilitation, we are going to see the intra-African trade double by the year 2022. You are aware that currently our intra-African trade is uh, roughly 10 to 16 percent. But if we double that by 2022, we are seeing a situation where we'll be talking of uh, more than 30 percent, which will now be joining the, the levels we are seeing in other, other blocks. And uh, what this means is when we have enhanced our intra-African trade, which has got had a trickle-down effect, then the issue of the monetary union uh, is not a priority now. And uh, I'm sure, and depending on the performance of the customs union, and mm -hmm. then from the customs union, you know, we, you have to move to the common market, where you have to have the freedom of the factors of uh, production and the rights of establishment. And you have seen in all the other wrecks in Africa, apart from ESC, this has been a, a, a tough issue to agree on. It's only ESC which has moved to a customs union, to a common market, and it has finalized negotiations uh, at the monetary union. And therefore, for now, let's uh, focus on having the CFTA and the, after the CFTA, the customs union, which have got a significant impact to the common as citizens of Africa. Thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to talk to us and certainly hope that this will not see us uh, have our local manufacturers, you know, pushed to uh, non-producing at all because mm -hmm. the cost of production, for instance, uh, the cost of producing uh, uh, give and take milk uh, in Zambia could be high or, you know, cost of producing eggs could be high and yet neighboring country cost of producing eggs is equal to zero you know and then you have all these eggs flooded in here and then at the end of it all <laughs> this african country just becomes a consuming or an import oriented country i hope that's not the direction we're gonna go i know you were strong about it but uh, there's need for proper regulation on how there's going to be a fair play or a, le a level playing field to avoid countries now becoming dependent on other countries for survival I, I fully agree mm -hmm. with you, Jason. Uh, proper uh, regulations needs to be in place, but also uh, the manufacturing sector uh, uh, needs to be prepared uh, when the CFTA comes into place. Uh, when I talked about uh, one of the benefits being uh, uh, sparring uh, industrialization, this comes with the new technologies, and therefore, for 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 manufacturing sector uh, to to fit in the game, they need to tighten their belts uh, because when you have uh, a free market you are allowing for duty free quarter free importations tighten and their belt or start engaging them now so that they are psychologically prepared yes you start engaging them now so that they are uh, psychologically prepared and also identify in africa which is our niche market uh, we are good in producing sugar for example, Zambia is a surplus sugar production. You know Africa is a continent, is a deficit sugar pro uh, producer. So can we enhance this and become uh, 
uh, the, the, the mega supplier of uh, of, of uh, sugar in uh, in Africa. We go and look at uh, services. Uh, this uh, industrialization and the growth in the trade is going to trigger growth in services, especially financial services, because all these uh, investments will need to be uh, financed. So, how do we place ourselves? to be a key supplier of these services when they are needed. Then we look at uh, our other products where we have a comparative advantage. Before the implementation of the CFTM becomes, what do we need to, to, to expand and ensure that uh, uh, we, 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 we beat our competitors? Then there is what we call the, the regional value chains. If we, are, we produce a high quality cotton, but we are not able to produce uh, high quality uh, textile products. Can we uh, link with Mauritius, which is able to produce uh, high-end textile products, and we be in the same uh, value chain? In this way, we'll be able to produce large quantities right. uh, cotton, right. and then uh, they feed into uh, the Mauritius uh, manufacturing sector, and at the end, it becomes a win-win. Right. I just have one 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 concern, and 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 I'm mm. glad that you've you know cleared some of the the issues we had uh, with all these countries coming together, all these regional blocks, and then having one free trade area for Africa um, comes with a lot of movement of people. And you did mention the issue of visa-free movement. Uh, don't you think this will cause some sort of uh, lack of a better word chaos? Uh, we already have Boko Haram on the continent. We already have. Um, Al Shabaab in some countries won't this be a threat to the security of some of the nations on this continent? Um, Chiluvia, as I mentioned, uh, free trade area we are looking at uh, starting with the goods. Mm. Uh, you know that the ambition is to liberalize ninety uh, percent, and uh, some LDCs have asked for special dis dispensation. Zambia is one of them, whereby the ambition will be 85%, which they will have a period of uh, 15 years mm -hmm. uh, to achieve. Uh, that notwithstanding, when it comes to security issues, it is very key. And for, for us to be able to trade more, our, our region and our continent needs to be secure. And uh, as I mentioned, when the CFTA comes to place, uh, it will not do away with the national languishing issues. It will not do away with the national security measures. All the measures which takes place will be uh, still in place. It will not be different. Currently, uh, commerce has relaxed uh, uh, visas, uh, but we have not seen that influx uh, into Zambia. Why? Your immigration uh, laws are still in place, and you have to screen all mm -hmm. the people who come into to your country. So this will not be uh, tempered with by the CFTA. So uh, we are also uh, uh, seeing a situation where uh, respective member states will have to look at uh, how are we going to address the expected All negatives. Right. But I can tell you the negatives are less than the positives. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Musangere, for coming through to the program. It's that time of the morning when we get to visit the kitchen and see what we are being prepared for. And as far as breakfast is concerned, stay with us right here on the country's number one TV breakfast show.